This is a reply to some of the feedback that I got on my real estate piece. Uh, it's going to be a much shorter reply and it's going to deal with uh, the idea of rent versus ownership and it's going to deal with uh, the long-term nature of real estate as an asset. Now, okay, so the first, the first thing that I want to do is talk a little bit about rent versus uh, so-called ownership. Now, unless you've paid for your house with cash, and if you've done that, that's a problem, and that's a video for another day. But unless you've paid for your house with cash, either a landlord or a bank is going to have a large percentage ownership in, uh, you know, the place where you hang your hat every day. Now, in the case of a landlord, that's an identifiable person or corporation. And in the case of a bank, obviously, it's in the form of a mortgage that you pay every two weeks or every month. Uh, when people say that with a landlord or when you pay rent, you're throwing money down a rat hole, you're wasting money. Uh, that idea comes from a bit of ignorance about what an amortization table looks like. When you pay a mortgage, the first 14 years, I think, of that mortgage, and you can check this if you don't believe me, but the first 14 years of the mortgage, uh, you're only paying interest to the bank. So you're not actually paying down uh, most of your debt for the vast majority of the length of time of your mortgage or for the first decade plus. Now, given that, how do we get this idea that real estate has been a value creator? Well, it's certainly not from paying down the debt uh, for most people because if they bought real estate 10 years ago and they've been paying this mortgage off religiously every, every month or every two weeks for the last 10 years, they've, they've barely made a dent in the debt that they have outstanding to the bank because they've only paid interest which is, in my view, the definition of pouring money down a rat hole. We have this idea that real estate has created value over the last 10 years because of the price of the, because of the fact that the price has risen. And can any asset that's traded, whether it's a stock or a piece of real estate or a bond or anything, can, it, can its price sort of continue going up forever? As is sometimes said, can a tree grow to the sky? I would say no. And for that reason, on a risk adjusted basis or on a risk reward basis, when you uh, buy an asset that's gone up a lot in the last 10 years, the chance of it continuing to rise at that price is very low. And so therefore, uh, if you take on a large mortgage to buy a piece of property today, the fear is that the price, which has been the value, the price movement, which has been the value creator over the last 10 years, is gonna be the value destroyer. So you're gonna have a $100,000 house, for example, that you own $10,000 of, and you have a $90,000 mortgage, if that house drops to $80,000, uh, which it could very well do, you're gonna, you know, your wealth is gonna be wiped out and you're gonna have what's called negative equity, and that's a problem. Uh, the second point I wanna make in response to the responses I got uh, to my uh, real estate piece is the following. Uh, when people talk about uh, investing in real estate, and they compare that to investing in stock, for example, I, I would ask that people be a little bit more honest with themselves and a little bit more honest with, uh, you know, people they're talking to about it. If I like Microsoft, for example, and I don't necessarily advocate buying Microsoft, but let's say I'm an, um, an investor in shares of Microsoft and I wanna hold that Microsoft stock for 20 years, no one's ever gonna demand that I you know, uh, pay property tax on my Microsoft shares. No one's ever gonna demand that uh, I have to repair the roof of my Microsoft shares. No one's ever gonna demand that I entirely renovate my shares in Microsoft, whereas those things happen with real estate. So if you look at real estate as an investment, be honest with the cash flows associated with that investment. Uh, if I buy a house at $200,000 and I sell it at $700,000, that looks great, but I, I'm not being honest with myself if I don't also count the property taxes I paid over time that I wouldn't pay as a, as a tenant. And I'm not being honest with myself if I, if I don't take into account the, um, the renovation tax that you know, I do periodically on my house because I have to change the backsplash or I have to get new brushed steel appliances or I have to change the countertop or get new flooring or whatever else. Look at the profitability of places like Lowe's and Home Depot over time, over the last 10, 15 years. And their profit has been taken out of the pockets of people who've renovated their houses. And so the idea that you can look at a house as a purchase price and a sale price and assume that everything else is constant is really, really naive and financially dangerous. So that about does her.
So that about does her. Wraps her all up. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you look forward to seeing me again.